Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show, where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. All right. Welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. And we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing because that's who we are and that's what we do. So that's what we like to, uh, to help everybody. So, you know, um, before we jump in, I do want to do a shameless plug right out of the gates for us because we have a brand new book that just hit Amazon. So if you're watching, you'll be able to see a copy of this. But uh, if not, you can click the link. I'm sure the links are on here, but you can go get the birth of the everyday real estate investor, how uh, real estate, not stocks, create wealth. And Amber and I wrote that through 15 years and a thousand deals of experience. We wrote all of our, uh, our journeys there and kind of all kinds of cool things to help you out in your real estate journey. You guys know we always try and find an appropriate guest that comes on to help you with your real estate needs, with your real estate strategies and all that. And so we are lucky to have Melanie Sigma here today. Melanie, how are you? You're from the One Stop Tax Strategist. Welcome. Yep. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. And I, we were just talking before we got started here today. You said that on average, you save people about $38,000 a year on their taxes. Yep. That's and that's in opening. permanent savings. Yep. That's a pretty good opener right there. And I think with where we are right now, as this is playing in uh, November of 2022, it's a good time to talk about taxes. No one likes talking about taxes, but it's something you got to talk about sometimes. So tell us a little background on you. Yeah, for sure. Well, just to, to add on to that, it's actually, this is a, what we call our busiest time of the year. Most people think CPAs, it's going to be their, their busiest time of the year is going to be in the spring. Ours is actually the end of the year. We like to call it our tax planning season. Uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> um, and so this is when, if you have a CPA, this is when you should be meeting with them. This is when your CPA or your tax professional becomes your profit center. And so this is definitely the most important time of the year. Um, but just a little bit about us. I want to say so. Your CPA yeah. becomes your profit center. Well said. Yes. Thank That's you. Good, good stuff. It should be. All, a good CPA should be a profit center for you. <laughs> yeah. So a little bit about us. My dad's a CPA. He's been a CPA longer than I've been alive. And he's a little different uh, in the way that he thinks of things. He he, he realized, so we, we were partnered with Tony Robbins for a while. And he went to business mastery events. And, and Tony talks about there's an artist, there's an entrepreneur. And he realized that he is an artist. And so taxes are his art, as odd as that sounds. Um, who's, your, who's your dad? My dad's Byron McBroom. Okay, he, we've been we've been to Samantha Robbins events. I didn't remember we, seeing him, but that's we okay. The, we were at that business mastery. Okay, um, very cool. Actually, and yeah. um, I I remember him talking about that specifically, the artist and the, the yeah. operator. Yep. Yes, the operator. That was the one I couldn't think of. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So basically, he realized he's an artist, and so he, you know, the cool thing is that he's been able to take. Um, the creative tax strategies and systematize it in a way that he can teach a big team of people. And so what we've done is uh, he has his own tax firm, but we've also created this company that partners with several other CPAs and trains them on our strategies. Um, but we basically are a, a CPA concierge for people to find them the CPA that meets their needs and can help them pay as little taxes as legally possible. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I know that real estate I know you deal with probably a lot of different businesses, but real estate yeah. in particular has a lot of cool strategies you can use, right? Yeah, real estate is awesome to leverage against your tax exposure. Yeah, people don't understand that. that some, you know, you do make, like when you flip a house, you make money, but you also, when you start buying rentals, you start being able to make money that you don't even see until it comes tax time, if you have the right tax strategist behind yeah. you, agree? Right? For sure. Maybe you could talk about a couple of those, couple of those that that are powerful strategies that we can use. Maybe you know we're we're real big on building. We teach people how to you know flip a couple of houses, but also get into buying rentals as soon as you can. What yeah. Are, or what kind of rental? And maybe if you have some uh, some experience on some rental education, that'd be great. And just maybe some uh, you know how you can benefit from having rentals in your portfolio with taxes. Yeah, for sure. So one thing that a lot of people do, if you're a real estate professional and you get real estate professional status, that doesn't mean you're a realtor. You can do cost seg studies, which basically allows you to accelerate the depreciation and really offset your tax exposure doing that. So you can take accelerate that depreciation in that whole first year, and that basically allows you to offset a lot of your income. And so that's a great thing. 
Um, one thing that is overlooked, though, is picking the right entity. If you are doing a lot of fix and flips, then, you know, typically an S Corp is going to make sense if you're netting over 70,000. A lot of buy and holds need to be in an LLC or they, they really don't get the benefits of an S Corp. And so an LLC is a good uh, vehicle for that unless you're utilizing, you know, different trusts or anything like that. Um, but just those types of things are really great. If you're selling a property, there's strategies to avoid or defer capital gains if you're going to be paying gains of over 250000 So there's just a lot of little strategies that you can plug in to help make a big difference on your tax bill. Yeah. Look. What, what's interesting to me about this and, and having you on as a guest is we, there's so many misconceptions and misinformation about real estate in particular that make people, they kind of scare people away from it. And one of mm -hmm. those is taxes. Oh, well, for, for example, we do a lot of like ads on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah. And some people actually show one of our student success stories. You know, Deborah put in, you know, bought the house for this much, put this much into for renovation, sold it for this much. Here was her profit. And every single time we post that ad, somebody puts in the comment, Oh yeah, but she had to pay taxes on all that, and you know, all that, all that profit. Yeah. They, they just, they don't understand all of the benefits that go along with that and, yeah. and tax breaks they get and everything. So I think it's brilliant that there's people out there that they can just plug and play into you being one of them, your company being one of them that, that allows them to, to see the full picture and to really reap all the benefits. Yeah, people like that, I think, are just trying to make an excuse for themselves to a reason why they don't take advantage of this thing. Yeah, I, 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 in, the, in the early days, I would get into a spat with them and go, so let's say you made 50000 They said, well, you have to pay 50%. I said, Let, let's assume you're correct. You're not correct, but let's assume you're correct. And if you made 50000 you had you kept twenty five. you You're still $25,000 ahead of where you started yeah. out the first place. So, okay. Tell me where that's bad. <laughs> a bigger tax bracket i don't even I, yeah. some people yeah. just, they just they crack me up the way they think sometimes but yeah you know we always tell everybody it's not about how much you make it's about how much you keep that's right? true so yeah. you guys talk about a lot so um how would you you know what would you tell someone to do that's getting started in real estate maybe they have maybe this starting to have profit show what's kind of their next step because i always tell people i say year two is when things start getting interesting because now you have taxes due so you have a w-2 job because most people mm -hmm. that we, we talk to most of our audience has has a job they flip alongside their job or they buy yeah. rent alongside their job what can they do to you know protect themselves and, and all that now what can they do yeah i would make sure you're talking with the tax professional to make sure you're doing everything right that's the first thing um, making sure you're tracking everything that you get a good set of books or you know at least track everything in excel spreadsheet the problem with an excel spreadsheet is that you're not you're not going to be, you know, capturing everything uh, possibly that the, the, the negative possibility, but making sure that you're tracking all those expenses and everything so you can write those off against your income. If you have a spouse that doesn't work and you're a W-2 employee and you can't justify real estate status, you might be able to look at getting them uh, real estate professional status. Um, and then, you know, then any type of property you're getting, you can take advantage of that accelerated depreciation. Um, I'd say too, looking at like just the, the people around you that you can take advantage of. Like if you have kids, you can get them on the payroll. If it makes sense, my five and seven year old are on my payroll. I pay them 12,950 tax free. Um, they're my little models. So, <laughs> so, so, that's, can, so that's something we haven't done yet. So you can put your kids on payroll and pay them without having to handle any of any payroll taxes. So if you pay them through an LLC or sole proprietor, then you don't have to pay payroll taxes. You still have to do forms. So that's where talking with a professional is important. But yeah, you get that whole money, the 12950 tax free. So my kids, I take that and then I fund whatever their future is going to be with they that. Get it? Do they get it tax free? So you, you can give it tax free. Yeah. From any FICA or anything, you can give it tax free, but they can receive it tax free also if you use the right forms and, and do it the right way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh, that's pretty clever. That's good you guys, how many kids do you guys have? 30. 30? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have, I've had five kids, so I got a lot. We have four kids. Wow. Have, yeah, so yeah, so it's a lot. A bit, we have a lot, but two. two well, our, our oldest daughter is about to turn 18 in about two weeks. And okay. we also have a nine and a seven-year-old. 
Cool. Yeah. yeah. So the nine to seven, you can get, they can be your little models or if they, you know, if they're old enough to help out around the property and do different things, you can use them for that. For your older kids though, um, this wouldn't be for somebody just starting out. This would be somebody more established, but you can set up a separate entity and funnel some of your income to their lower tax bracket. That's a pretty big savings. Okay. Well, that's pretty clever. Yeah. I know, I know that people, people underestimate the power of having a good tax professional. They also underestimate the power of having organized books. And for years, we had organized books. And I'll tell you, the last two years, our CFO that we had for eight years sadly developed a drinking problem. She was young, oh, no. years old. And we moved from New York to Florida. So in that move, I trusted her to run the books. Well, I can't describe the crazy world I've lived in for the past two years because nothing was getting done. Some stuff was getting paid, not paid, confusion. And we had five companies, you know, probably. 10 million bucks a year running through these companies and different things. And, and all of a sudden we realized that it wasn't being done. And I had to let her, like they caught her drinking in the park. And finally, I'm like, someone sit with her and see what the hell is going on. What's yeah. happening? I wasn't getting PLs for a year. And I couldn't, I was like, I, I don't know. I'm, and if you try and run a company out of your checking account, you're going to lose. Yeah. And, and we couldn't do it. So I, I, we had to hire two, full-on companies, a CFO company, a bookkeeping, and an overseas bookkeeping company to get, and it's been three months, and I think we're all, we're in the last, like, two weeks of getting this, getting unscrewed. Oh, and good. So, um, my point to all that is not to say boo-hoo, but it's been, a, it's been a major challenge, but not having optics on your finances is, it's detrimental. I mean, it's so bad. Yeah, especially if you have a lot going on, like yourself, that well, can be huge. We got, you know, one company's got 40 employees, one's got about 12 and it's, you know, it's in plus we, we have 40, probably have 13 Airbnb or short-term rentals. So lots of transactions going on mm -hmm. and not having, you know, Amber runs that business. She's like, are we making money or not? I'm like, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you, you know, yeah. just, just, the money got convoluted. So it's, it's been, I'm so anxious to get our hands wrapped around some clarity. So what yeah. you're for is so crucial. You've got to have clarity. And I've come to a place where I've had clarity. And I have a place where I haven't had it for over a year. Yeah. And I tell you, it's it's stressful. I tell everybody, I say, running my company's been like this. I feel like I'm Helen Keller. I got <laughs> blind. I'm flying a plane. I can't see. And every once in a while, I get a glimpse. And then I, you know, that's about it. It's been terrible. Yeah. So I think well, you you can't do any tax planning either without knowing your numbers. So then you might be paying more in taxes than you really should yeah. be. Yeah. And then really like on that note, you know, you're paying for peace of mind in that instance, peace of mind and clarity, like you said, but tax planning too, if you know, it's not only saving money, it's also having clarity on what you're going to owe. If you're planning out with your, you know, sitting down with your tax preparer right now, making sure that you know what you're going to have to owe before December hits. So that one, you have control over, yeah, do I want to do that or not? Or two, um, you can just start setting aside if you don't have the money right now. You know, you can also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there there are definitely strategies where if you have a big year, you make half a million bucks in a year, let's just say, for an argument's sake, and you you've got, you know, you have let's assume you haven't you haven't pissed it all away. Let's assume you've got you got three hundred grand laying around. In theory, you could spend a couple hundred grand, get invested into a property, and take some depreciation, and you yep. can offset that offset that tax burden, maybe next to nothing. And yeah. Then people realize, like you said, you have, but you have to have. You have to know where you are to be able to plan because you can't do that on December 27th. Yes. Right. Exactly. You need to be able to plan. So you need the right people like you. You need someone to come in there because that's what you guys do. You guys, you are a concierge, but you're also, your dad does it, right? Yes. Yes. He's uh, taught us pretty much everything. He teaches all the CPAs, works really closely with them to make sure that we're saving our clients as much as possible. We have a checklist that we walk them all through, making sure we're scratching and clawing for all deductions possible. One thing to keep in mind, though, as you are tax planning, if you're getting if you're needing loans to be able to buy properties, you know, buying or paying taxes buys you borrowing power. And so right. sometimes it makes sense to pay a little taxes if you're needing to qualify for a loan. Other right. times you can kind of knock that down as much as possible. Yeah, don't be, that's, that's the hardest part about being, a, being a, a business owner is that you don't want to show an income and you can legally not show income on a lot of ways. The problem yeah. is you want to borrow money to buy a house or buy a piece of property and you go to the bank and say, I didn't make any money last year, but I really did. They don't care. Yeah. They want exactly. to So you have to have that strategy. So you know, in advance when you're going in. So yeah. that's, uh, that's crucial. And 
I think there's so much fear that goes with taxes too, just like innately, oh my gosh, am I going to get in trouble? And information is power in that case. And, and we always tell people, you know, you don't have to know everything yourself to be able to be like really effective or successful in business. You just have to know the people that are. So exactly. you, you, you hire a good CPA, you hire a good bookkeeper, you hire all the right people that are good in their fields. And the, the thing I was thinking about with the fear though, is more specific to this isn't stuff that's like in gray areas either. I mean, these are legal deductions that you're taking that you're not going to get like in trouble or penalized for. Yeah. They're, they're, and I, I think that's what scares a lot of people. Yeah. Year, years ago, um, gosh, I'm trying to think how many years ago, probably 20 something years ago, I went to another Anthony Robbins event many years ago. It was down in New Jersey at the, I think Met, they didn't call it MetLife Stadium. Now that's what it was filled up with people. Mm -hmm. And a guy spoke on there named Sandy Botkin. I don't even know if the guy's still around or not. But he was an ex IRS agent. That okay. Was, of course. And I remember spending a lot of money, two grand or something. I didn't have the money back then, but I did. I put a credit card and I bought this course. And it taught me how to think like a business owner. And it taught mm -hmm. me deductions that I could make. And maybe you could give some of our listeners some basic deduction. I'll put you on the spot a little bit. Some basic deductions. Like, for instance, maybe I think dinner is still allowed now. I think till the next, uh, till this, whatever. I think, I think that's still happening now, but there, there are, there's that, there's deductions on your office. Maybe, maybe just give people some basic, because I think maybe yeah. you've forgotten more than you remember probably, you know what I mean? In the, in the business, maybe some of our listeners don't understand like right off what I try to tell my, I told my son, let's get you an LLC. You can write off part of your house. You know, you can write off, you know, part of what you rent, part of your power yeah. bill, part of your, part of your, your Wi-Fi, cell phone, bill. Cell your, phone, phone bill. your car, gas, um, your auto insurance, all that stuff. Um, you can write off, um, anything like you said, you could do the home office deduction if you're working at home, or if you have an office outside of your home, you can do the Augusta strategy, which is where the IRS allows you to rent your home to your business for 14 days tax-free. Oh. Um, that came from the Augusta, Georgia golf tournament, you know, and uh, people would leave town for two weeks. So the IRS just says everybody can do this. I saw that the other day, actually. I thought, I thought. So that's something I, never, I didn't heard about. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's a lot of things. I think when people, when people see, you're not a Seinfeld chance, but by, by, by. I love Seinfeld. <laughs> It All does. right, so, so so do you remember the episode where they were trying to uh, send back the stereo or somebody said, it's a write-off? He goes, I don't even know what a write-off is. What's a write-off? <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Know, but they do, and they're the ones writing it off, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so I remember, so when people, we talk about write-off as we throw it out there. Let me describe what to, to the audience what I think it is. You can correct me or whatever, but yeah. in... In a normal, in a well, let's call it a normal. I've never been a normal. I've worked for myself since I was 19 years old, so it's been a long time. I I don't really remember having a W-2, but let's say someone with W-2, they get paid their wage, taxes come out, and then they pay for their expenses. They pay for their phone. They pay for all this kind of stuff. As a self-employed person, you have income that comes in. Then you take out a lot of expenses. Then you pay tax on what's left over. Is that the best way to right. to tell me yeah. what a write-off is? Yes. So you so write it off the, against your income. Where you can't do that if you're paying for that after you pay taxes. I think yeah. people don't understand the power. You know, again, you don't know what you don't know in life. You right? don't. So, you know, I, I laugh at that side book. I'm like, do you know what to write off this? No, I don't know. Do you know? You know, and that's, yeah. but that's most people. They're like, people talk about write-offs. I don't know what that is, but it means that you get to write off an expense against your income yeah. before you pay tax on it. The way that I like to think about it is, so whatever your tax bracket is, let's say you're in a 30% tax bracket. If you're writing off $100, you get a 30% discount for that item because it's basically going to take 30%. Basically, you're not paying the tax on that 30%. So that's the way that I like to think of it. Yeah. Um, and it makes people go, you know, it goes, okay, I'm going to save $30 if I'm spending $100. So that's helpful. So you yeah. can wrap your arms around that. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, this has been uh, this has been good stuff. I think to let let our listeners know how they can get a hold of you, and to, I guess tell everybody what services you 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 have a little bit, but make sure they yeah. know all the services you offer to them because this is a really good time for this. This this will post in the next week or two here, so it'll be it'll cool. be in time for this tax season. Yeah, and uh, we'd love to love to send some business your way for sure. Yeah. So what we like to do is we like to start off with a free tax assessment. I like to offer that just because something that's important to us is that we want to make a difference in our clients' lives. And so we, we don't want to just take people on if we can't actually save them money. Um, and so 
We'll start off with a free tax assessment. I have a spreadsheet that I basically plug about 30 questions, your answers to in there, and it spits out what we think we can save you. So it kind of gives you a second opinion. If you're getting a cancer diagnosis or if you're getting work done on your house, you always get a second opinion, right? So we always say, why don't people get a second opinion on their taxes as well? When it's probably the biggest yep. expense that they'll pay in their lifetime. So we give basically estimate that, then we start off with a tax plan, if it makes sense. And so we offer tax planning, tax preparation, we're a full service accounting firm. So we do bookkeeping, payroll, um, all of that. We can help you find somebody for those needs. And then if you need help on the financial planning side of things, I can do that as well. Um, but the, the main thing that we look at is our, our uh, we have a seven step tax solution and our step seven is get your money for nothing and your dreams tax free. And so our goal is to help you save um, on your tax bill and use that to fund your dreams. And a lot of your um, your listeners are going to be putting that into real estate. Yeah, we had uh, one client that we got him a 15 million dollar deferral. Oh, no, we, he got a basically he deferred 15 million a tax on $15 million. So it's a $7.5 million tax deferral. And so instead of paying the IRS that, he took that and he funded his real estate portfolio in 2010. Oh, so you can nice. imagine yeah, what's that. Yeah. And that's creative tax planning. So that's the kind of stuff, Not that's not the average person right there, but right. it was somebody that took a business and then he funded his real estate with that. Right. So pretty powerful. All, all you listeners who have $15 million, you're not sure what to do with. No yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but even like the little, the, you know, the savings of what could you do with an extra $10,000 that, right. that every single year, the compound yeah. interest of that is powerful. So yeah. um, if people want to get a hold of me, you can either follow me on Instagram. Melanie Sigma is my handle. Um, I try to do a lot of posts there. Otherwise um, you can go ahead and um, I, I've shared with you guys my link tree link. Is that going to be posted in the show notes? Should be. Yeah, should yeah, be. Yeah. So if not, I'll get that to you. You can click on that link tree and then that's a way to go ahead and grab your free tax assessment. So, and we actually got finished a small little book. It's like a more of a booklet, but talks about the seven dangers that every entrepreneur is exposed to and okay. how to guard against those. And so um, I can share that as a free just gift as well for your listeners. Thank you for that. That'd be fantastic. The book writing process is brutal. That. What's what? that? The book know. writing. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I say the book writing process is brutal. So you guys, I know the work that you guys put into that book. So you guys need to make sure you listen to it, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or read it. Not not easy. But How would they get a copy of that, Melanie? Is that on the link tree as well? It's it's uh if they basically on my link tree, I'll have my email. They can send me an email and I can send that out. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Melly, this has been great. Perfect timing and uh, good information. And uh, if you guys want to save a lot of money on taxes and be smart about your taxes and plan in advance, give Melanie and her dad a call and uh, let them help you out. So cool. All right. Well, Melly, thanks, thanks for being a guest. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You bet. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening to our Real Estate of Mind show. We'll see you on the next episode. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.